Namaste. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Facebook live session of 30 minutes on the page of Speak Healthy. I am Janil, and today is the third International Day of Yoga, which is being celebrated by people across the globe in various different ways. And today we have a lovely audience over here, and we are going to do a certain sequence taking influence from the common yoga protocol given by the Indian government, the Ministry of Ayush. So let's start. Ensure that you are wearing comfortable clothes, you have a yoga mat handy, and you've not eaten something heavy just before this session. So let's start. Sit in a comfortable posture. It could be cross leg Sukhasana. Ensure your spine is straight. Roll your shoulders back and down. Chin parallel to the floor. Join your palms in a namaste. We'll chant Om three times. So take a deep inhale. On the exhale, we start the Om. to release your palms, open your eyes. We start with some Sukshum Vyayam, which is very gentle stretching of the joints. We begin with neck movements. Neck these days is being really abused because we are all using our cell phones and developing a text neck syndrome. So let's try and ease the neck muscles. So first inhale, exhale, bring the chin to the chest. Inhale, go up, look all the way up. We do it one more time. Exhale, chin to the chest. Feel the back of the neck stretching. Inhale, go all the way up. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale here, exhale, twist to the right. Twist your neck to the right. Look as behind as you can towards the right. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist the left, neck to the left. Inhale, come back to center, one more time. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Go, do these movements very slowly. Don't do jerky movements. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, release there. Inhale here. Exhale, drop your ear to the right shoulder, not the shoulder to the ear. So you're just dropping the ear to the shoulder. Feel a stretch on the opposite side. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, left. Left ear to the left shoulder. Inhale, center. One more time. Exhale, right side. Relax the right shoulder. Inhale, center. Exhale, left shoulder. As if you want to touch the ear to the shoulder, inhale, center, exhale, release. We do rotations of the neck clockwise once, clockwise, anti-clockwise once. So chin to the chest and start clockwise from the right side. So bring it from the right, eyes are open, go all the way left and look down and then anti-clockwise, reverse direction from the left, look up. Bring it to the other side and chin to the chest, release, look up. Just shrug your shoulders once and release. Release once again and release. Yeah. Come up to standing. We start with the standing postures. The first posture is the Tadasan or the palm tree posture. So feet together, standing. We spend so many hours standing in a day, but our posture of standing is so misaligned. So I'll just show you the correct way of standing. Both feet together, toes spread apart. Your knees slightly pulled up. Your tailbone, so avoid 
arching your tailbone too much. Try to tuck the tailbone in. So everybody do this, place your hands on your palm, on your waist, tuck the tailbone out. So this is what you're not supposed to do. And then tuck it in. Yeah, you should feel an engagement of your core. Maintain that, palms next to you. Relax the shoulders. And inhale, interlace the fingers. Raise the palm and the heel up. Lift up as much as you can. Have a balance. Exhale, release, hands and heels down. We do this one more time. Interlace the fingers. Inhale, hands and heels up. Relax the face. Don't be so tensed. Exhale, release the palms and the heels down. We move on to our next posture, the standing posture, the tree pose, Vrikshasan. So, this is a posture of balancing where you need to really focus and be in the moment. So, fix your left foot on the ground firmly. Take your right ankle with your hand, hold it, balance, place it on your inner thigh, left inner thigh. Leave it if you think you have the balance. Join your hands in Namaste. Relax the shoulders. Stay up for one deep long breath, inhale, exhale. Do you want to up the challenge? You can take your hands up, but ensure you're not losing your balance. Stay there for one more breath, inhale, exhale. Slowly release the palms and gently drop the leg down. Very nice. Now we do this on the other side. So now firm your right leg on the floor. Take your left ankle, hold it. Place the foot on the inner side of the foot, of the thigh. Now ensure your hips are straight. You're not tilting, hips are straight. Balance, palms in Namaste. Look at a point in front of you. Stay for one deep long breath. Inhale, exhale. Let's try and slightly up it. Take your hands up. Relax the face. One breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Very nice. And release the hands. Release the legs. We move on to two basic standing elements, which is a forward fold and a back bend. All right? So we do a very simple forward call, pose called the Padhastasana. Okay? So you inhale, raise both your hands up, as if you're trying to reach up, hands more up. Exhale, push the hips behind, yeah, you're pushing the hips behind, back is straight and palms on the floor. And look down. If your knees are very tight, you can gently do a micro bend. Gently do a micro bend in your knees, lean the weight more forward, feel as if you're surrendering to the ground. Stay there for one more breath. Inhale. Complete that breath. Exhale. And inhale. Slowly come up. Hands also come up. Exhale. Release. This really helps to calm the nervous system because your blood flow is going in the opposite direction. Now we did a forward fold. We need to counter it by doing a back bend. So we'll be doing a very simple posture called the Ardha Chakrasan. So I'll just show it. You stand again straight, tailbone tucked in. Remember the basics. Take both your hands, place it on your waist, on your lower back. Palms facing down. And you inhale, expand the chest and back bend. As much as your body allows. Drop the neck very gently. Your knees can be little bent. Drop the neck as much as the neck allows. Stay there for one deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, slowly come up. And release. Usually back bends are difficult because in our day, we do a lot of actions which are forward. We lift things. We are standing. You know, things are very forward, fold oriented. We don't do any action, which is this. That's why back bends are difficult. But it's very important to have back bends in your daily asana practice. 
We move on to another posture, Trikonasana. So have a little distance between the two feet, comfortable distance, foot straight, both the big toes pointing straight, stretch both your hands, inhale here, get the right leg outside, get the right leg outside, so you are pointing the toes outside and you exhale, go down, you can either hold the toe or place your palm behind and the top hand is straight. Top hand is straight. If the neck allows, look towards the top. Stay there for one deep long breath. Inhale. Look up if possible. Exhale. From there, inhale slowly, come back up. Rotate that right foot inside. Rotate the left foot outside. We do it on the other side now. Inhale. Exhale. So look up if possible. Stay there for one deep breath. Imagine there's a wall at your back and you're trying to flatten your chest over there. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale slowly come up. Exhale release. Get the feet together. Just shake the feet off in case there is any tightness. If at any point during the practice you feel out of breath or you feel that you got a pinch anywhere, back out. Take it easy. Yeah? We'll move on to the next set of asanas, which is seated postures. So everybody sit down on your mat. Face each other. Stretch your legs straight. We're doing a posture called the Bhadrasana where the feet are stretched out, then you join the soles of the foot together and drag them inside. Hold the foot with both your hands. Walk the feet as inside as possible. Straighten the back. Pull the shoulders down. So don't stress your shoulders. Shoulders are down. And we just add a little fun here. Imagine you are a butterfly and you want to flap your wings. This is a wonderful posture for releasing all the tension that we store in our hips. <laughs> Try to not move the upper body too much. Imagine you're just moving your hips and slowly relax. Release the legs. We move on to a sitting back bend called the half camel posture. Okay? So you come up on your knees. If you have a knee problem, you can place a blanket under the knee so that your knees don't get hurt. Okay? So from here, just watch. Same thing that we did. Place both your hands over here and inhale, go back. As behind as possible, drop the neck as much as the body allows. Always listen to your body. Now walk the elbows inside. So don't let the elbows go out. Walk the elbows towards each other. Yeah, nice. Walk the elbows towards each other. Take one deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale slowly. Come back up and sit down. Sit in Vajrasan. We move on to the next posture. Again, the principles remain the same. What we just did? Back bend. How will we counter it? Forward fold. So we're doing a posture called the Shashank Asana or the hair pose. So from Vajrasan, expand the knees. Expand the knees. Have a little distance. Inhale over here. Exhale, walk your hands forward and touch your forehead on the floor. This should be a very releasing posture. You're trying to relax your elbows. Let the elbows also drop on the floor. Relax your shoulders. Take a deep breath here. Inhale. Exhale. This is a wonderful stress relieving posture. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, release. We do one more sitting posture, twisting. All right? So from here, stretch both your legs to the front. Twisting poses are called as detoxifying poses. They work on all your abdominal organs and really help to bring out all the 
toxins over there. So take your right leg, place it outside the left knee. Right leg, outside the left knee. Yeah, everybody got that? Left leg, fold it inside. You're not sitting on it, but you're just folding it. Okay? Use your right hand, push the knee towards you, raise your left hand. Inhale, raise your left hand, everybody. Raise your left hand, everybody. Exhale, plug your elbow outside the knee. Plug your elbow outside the knee. And if possible, hold the ankle and the other hand goes behind. You're looking to your right. You're twisting as much as possible towards your right. Yeah, so this knee is, hand is outside, yeah. Take one deep breath here. Try to relax the shoulders. Turn this, yeah. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly come back to center. Release both the legs back into Dandasan. Everybody felt that little twist? You should feel your navel shifting towards whatever direction you're twisting. Take your right leg. Now, take your left leg, place it outside the right knee and your right leg, fold it inside. Everybody here till this much? Okay. Raise your right hand, inhale, raise your right hand, place it outside the knee, outside. You should already feel a twist happening in your abdomen. If this hand wants to stay or good, or you can hold the ankle and the other hand goes behind and you look towards the back shoulder. We stay here for one deep breath. Look towards the back shoulder, yeah. Relax both the shoulders. Should not feel any strain here. Relax this, relax this, relax. One breath, inhale, exhale. Come back to center and release. So we are done with the sitting postures. We move on to postures on the prone, so lying down on your stomach. So everybody lie on your stomach, heads over here. We'll be doing two postures over here. One is the Bhujang Asana. So everybody first forehead on the floor. Place your palms next to your chest, next to your chest. Feet are flat. And inhale, lift your head and the chest up. Inhale, lift your head and the chest up. Get your elbows close to the body. Get your elbows close to the body. Feel the shoulder muscles working. Feel your low back working. Stay there for one deep breath. Inhale. Relax the face. Relax the shoulders. Exhale. Slowly rest the head down. So this is Bhujang posture, the cobra pose. We move on to the next posture, which is called the Shalabhasana. You take both your palms, slightly place it under your thigh. Slightly place it under your thigh, feet together, both the feet together. Feet flat. And now inhale, raise only the legs up. Inhale, raise only the legs up. Use your thigh muscles, use your quads, engage your glutes and lift the legs up. The legs are straight. Legs are straight. Not bent from the knees. No, no. Not bent from the knees. You lift from here. Stay there for one more breath, inhale, exhale, drop the feet on the floor, relax for a moment, release the hands, relax for a moment. And we move on to postures on the spine, so turn to your right side and then roll on to your spine. From your right side, go very gently, move your body with complete awareness. Is everybody settled on their backs? So the first posture that we do is called the Setu Bandhasana or the bridge posture. So bend your knees, bend your knees. Hold the ankles with your foot, with your hand. Hold the ankles with your hand. Your shoulders are on the floor. Both your feet are on the floor. And you inhale, raise your hips up. Inhale, raise your hips up. Let your chin touch your chest. 
raise your hips up as much as the body allows. Stay up for one deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly bring the hips down. Release the legs. We move on to the next posture called the Pavan Muktasan. So you take, bend both the knees, hug both the legs with your, both, with your hands, bring them close to your chest and inhale, lift your head up. And continue to stay there for one deep breath. Press your abdomen. Feel as if your abdomen is getting squeezed in this posture. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly drop the head first and release the legs out. And now we get into the final posture. People really love this posture. It's called Shavasan. So we'll be doing a very short Shavasan. So spread the feet to the edge of the mat. Open the palms, palms facing up towards the ceiling. Relax both the shoulders. Gently tuck your chin in. Close your eyes. It's very important to do relaxation, to do this Shavasan after your yoga practice because this helps to store all the energy in the body, whatever is generated in the class. So never forget a Shavasan. You should slowly feel the heart rate pacifying. You should feel your breath becoming soft and slow. This looks very easy, but it's the most difficult posture to do. You can stay in Shavasan for five minutes, for 10 minutes, as long as you're aware that you're not going off to sleep. Slowly we'll come out of Shavasan, so make some movements, wriggle your toes and fingers, slide your feet together, turn to the right side, do these movements very gently, take support of your left hand and sit up. Be very gentle with your body, We'll do a couple of pranayams. Yoga is not just about doing physical postures. It's also about doing pranayams, using your breath. It's a way of living. We'll do one pranayam today, Anulom Vilom, alternate nostril breathing. So your left hand in a Gyan Mudra, join the index finger and the thumb, place it on the thigh. The other hand in the Vayu Mudra, so roll the first two fingers, stretch out the last two fingers, and your thumb is also free. Place the thumb on the right nostril. Inhale from the left, spine straight, head straight. Close the left. Exhale from the right. Inhale from the right. Close. Exhale, left. One more round. Inhale, left. Close. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Head straight. Close. Exhale, left. Gently release. This, this pranayam is very useful to get the breath in balance, to get the body in balance, and to get the mind in balance. You can practice this in the morning or just before going to sleep and you're guaranteed to get a peaceful sleep. With this, we come to an end. We'll close the practice by chanting one Om and three Shantis together. So join your hands in Namaste. Take a deep inhale. Oh. Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Gently open your eyes. Thank you for joining us today and we hope that yoga becomes a part of your daily life and you gain the innumerable benefits from it. Don't forget to keep watching our page for more updates on healthy lifestyle. 
Thank you so much for joining in today and um, have a wonderful day ahead. We have uh, a couple of questions which have come through this live session. Whoever is watching, they have raised a couple of questions and uh, I'm more than happy to answer it if I can just get them. Sure. Okay, so somebody is asking, what can I have after a yoga class? I think that's a very common question. A lot of people are confused about what can I have after a yoga class. Remember to hydrate. Remember to drink water. Or you can have a nice coconut water, so easily available in our country. Or you can also make a nice herbal tea. Fresh herbs, boil it and have that water. It's very, very soothing and calming. I hope that answers your question. Um, I think this is a very relevant question. People ask me this. Can I practice yoga any time of the day? So the answer is, well, our lifestyles have become so busy. We are always running or traveling. So the time you get free is your time of yoga. Ensure that you are not eating something very heavy. And that's it. You can do yoga any time. Yeah, because we need to fit yoga in our lifestyle. That's more important. We have time for one more question. Ah, there comes the most famous one. <laughs> do I need to be flexible to do yoga? <laughs> well, it's like you come to yoga to get flexible, right? So you don't need to be flexible to do yoga. In fact, yoga will make you flexible. And being flexible is just one benefit. There are numerable other benefits that you can get. So don't worry. Even if you're not flexible, the mat will always welcome you. I think on that note, have a wonderful day. Celebrate yoga, not just on International Day, but every single day. And have a wonderful life. Thank you so much. Namaste.